Hey guys, it's the Xbox Nut, and you can already see from the title, but this is going to be my first video reporting and uh, kind of uh, recording my progress through my ALU, which I soon to be, which I hope to be completing soon. It's 4-bit, and uh, I've, oh yeah, I can show you my new memory. I'm just going to give you guys some advice that when you're trying to build something big, as obviously this ALU is going to be massive in terms of what you can do with redstone. You can't do much more than an ALU apart from, you know, CPUs and stuff like that. But you always want to do something small first. You never want to jump into it. That's why I've done this small 2-bit adder and memory thing before I did this 8-bit memory and 7-bit adder. A uh, couple of reasons, you know, I did a bigger latch or bigger circuit for the D flip-flop over there, which helped me think about what I should do for the bigger one. And you can always spot the mistakes and fix them in your new one. So I can just show you now that the 8-bit thing works, my my new memory slot. There you go, 00101111, 00101111. It's all good. Um, so yeah, here uh, I'm just going to give you the overall plan of my ALU, which is already working for a couple of functions, three at the moment, which I'll go into in a second. So here... Um, Here's how it works. You put your input in on this panel. This is this this is the one bit example. Put your input here. Whatever it is, it will power all of the functions and all the functions will calculate the outputs. But before they do, they will have to be uh, enabled by a 3-bit decoder, which I plan to do, which is basically a combination of 3 bits. So because in binary 3, 3 bits can add up to 7. There are 7 different outputs but only 3 inputs using multiplexers very clever circuit so you can go research them basically turns three inputs into eight through different combinations like you know if one one zero is on then it will do number six or whatever and so you will enable one that's obviously going to be the seventh so it will enable it I think that's planning to be my subtraction you will enable it and the output will go into a bus which will go back to the beginning uh, back to the output screen and you'll have your subtraction output here obviously this is one bit so with 4-bit there will be 5 so you can fit everything in including addition and stuff like that so that's the general gist of how it's going to work or how it is working because it, I have done three functions those are adding, uh, anding, A-N-D and oring the three simplest ones in my opinion adding is probably going to be the biggest or maybe left shift, right shift, I don't know if you have any questions about these random functions that I'm talking about, send me messages, research them, do some stuff. It's pretty simple, but kind of complicated if you're not sure about what you're researching or talking about. So this is the ALU so far, 4-bit. This is the adder, 4-bit adder. That's the 4-bit OR function that I've created, and that's the 4-bit AND function that I've created. All by myself, I haven't used any schematics, obviously, for the apart from the adder. But the actual other ones I just made up myself, really. So let's do 10, which will be an 8 and a 2, and 7. And so let's find out. 10 plus 7, that's 17. So that will be a 16 and a 1 for the adder, which is a 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 16 plus 1, as you guys probably know binary, or hopefully. If you don't, you can go check out my T flip flop video, which explains it. And these are the enablers, basically AND gates. Underneath, I will put a decoder, and I'll put the inputs over there, and they'll go, oh, okay, he wants to add. So they'll power all of these, and when you take one off, obviously the output turns to one. So that's how the enabler works. Very clever. So that that lets you control what comes in and out of the output bus. Here's the OR, the OR, -er, OR, -er, O R E R. Uh, I've done some pretty good compaction with this by putting the the bottom input underground and powering the torch from here, powering a torch up here to input the functions and from the other way um, it just goes up from the top so basically we, we know that because it was 1010 one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, these top two won't be powering it but because the ones underneath are it basically says if either of them or both of them, it doesn't matter, are powering the torch that's basically oring, saying if one is on or the other is on or both of them are on, if any of them are on, the output will be 1. So you can see here that they're all on because I've uh, selected all the bits in general. Because 
like that. All four bits are being powered by at least one source. The next one is the anding. Uh, I did a, I just randomly made a three-bit and gate using my own knowledge of an and gate and general redstone stuff. We can see that this one isn't on, as you can see by this torch, because the idea is that both of these have to be on and the enabler has to be on. But if that's not on, if that is on, sorry, because we're not getting any input here, even if the enabler is not on, it won't power it because an AND gate states that both of them have to be on. And we can simulate this again. Ne only one of them is on, so this one is not on. Both of these ones are on, so this is on, and if the enabler is being selected, it will light up. Ne not both of those are on, and not both of those are on. So the only one that will go through is this bit here. Basically, I will string them around and just go in a line, so that's actually the uh, third bit. Sorry about that, I'm confusing myself, because in binary, obviously, that's uh, actually the second bit. Sorry, I was looking from left to right, stupid of me. So, yeah, that's basically my ALU so far. Uh, I had the idea from a friend called DXLinkJ. You should go check him out. He's done some. He's done an ALU, or he did. He was planning it, and then he stopped because he had a problem, which I helped him fix, and so now I've managed to convince him to keep going. And his is 8-bit, uh, and he had a... As I said, he had a problem with it, so that's why I'd say aim low first. Like, even if our redstone capabilities are roughly the same, I've chosen a 4-bit um, because I'm not as daring and I'm more more of a planning kind of person. I did think about this. I didn't write it down or use a redstone simulator, but I did think about this in my mind. That's why it's worked so well. And each of these separates a function, obviously. And you should also go check out my friend uh, Stephen, SC Joiner. Uh, he's done some cool redstone stuff as well. He plans to do some stuff using my memory circuit and my uh, seven segment displays. So you should go check them out. And thank you for watching my ALU video. Stay tuned for more progress reports. And hopefully by the end I'll have six or seven functions that we can play about with. So thank you for watching.